What's up, everybody? Welcome to the View from Jamestown podcast edition. I'm sitting down with TCC President Rob Roach and GM of Sales AJ Pacharka. Welcome, guys. Thanks for sitting down this morning. How's everything going? Good. Thanks for having us. Yeah, everything's going well. We got our nice, first nice sunny blue sky. What's it like? Sixty-five out right now. It's a nice day. Nice, nice to have some warm weather. It feels like summer's actually finally here. What's what's new? What's going on? What's what's going on in the market that you guys are seeing? Just just high level, high level stuff. Well, I think that uh, despite really flat, um, you know, trends in the raw material sector, we're seeing a lot of tightness. Um, you know, some not so critical, bordering on critical, and extremely critical tightness in, in different products. Um, of course, you know, a culmination of a lot of the different trends and. Um, geopolitical situations and um, market changes we've seen over the last year, year and a half. So um, I guess high level, just watching a lot of different products and scrambling to get as much as we can to secure the supply for our customers that have been, um, you know, loyal to us over the years and and making sure they're supplied and uh, with fair pricing uh, rateably in, in these tough times. AJ, how about yourself? Yeah, that's pretty much the, you know, Rob summed it up really well. A lot of things are, are tight. Um, you know, I guess like you said, it's not, you know, mostly it's not at a critical level, but a lot of things are, you know, kind of getting close to that that point. Um, and it's it's a lot of different chemistries, you know, organic, inorganic. There's just a lot of different things that are tight with no real, you know, driver behind it, whether it's, you know, plant outages or raw material shortages. There's just a lot of different reasons. And um, I think demand is also is also up generally for the most part as well um but that's you know a lot of what we're talking about lately yeah good point on demand i think it's uh you know we've talked a little bit about that in prior podcasts and um you know and also the fact that these monster producers are now at critical levels and you know one of them is going out and this is a ripple effect across the globe so um you know, it's a it's a good time as I've been seeing for every podcast that I've been involved in. It's a good time to have inventory on the floor. That's my only recommendation at this point. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. And we're we're now a couple of weeks out um, from the American Coding Show out in Indianapolis. It's the first week of May now. Uh, that show is the first week of April. Um, both myself, AJ, we were both down at the show. AJ, what did, what did you think about the show? How to how to go overall? I think it went pretty well. It was pretty good traffic from what we were seeing and. Made some good contacts. Yeah, I thought the the ACS this year was was excellent. It was probably our it was my third time exhibiting there, and um, I think we had the best foot traffic, the best you know quality of leads. Um, you know, it was a it was a really good show. We had a lot of a lot of things to offer and talk to people about. Um, yeah, it was a it was a really good show for us. Yeah, move, moving on to more in depth, what's going on in the industry? Um, I think starting on on the freight and logistics side, a natural change from the tight trucking market that we've been seeing for what's felt like quite a while now, quite a few months, um, if not maybe coming on a year. Um, increase in rail traffic um, stemming from the tightness in in trucking. Are you guys seeing the same thing? Is it is it something that you think will continue to grow and be tight, or what are what are we seeing on the on the freight side of things? It seems like freight's quieted down a little bit, you know, I guess depending on the lane, there's certain lanes that are still tough, um, you know, due to seasonality, you know, the, the produce season with, with things coming out of the southeast up to the up to the north, um, you know, we're just um, getting out of our, our thaw season on urea, so we're going to start shipping uh, 22 tons per truck now, I know it's a pretty small um, you know, small picture view, but that's something to something to note. But yeah, it seems like seems like freight's quieted down a little bit um, in the, in the recent weeks. Yeah. With the nightmare of trucking, it's pretty natural to find a, an, an alternate form of logistics and transport. So, you know, with fracking coming back with 67, $68 barrel oil, fracking is, uh, uh, certainly, um, grown substantially, uh, in, in North America, putting increased demand on the railroads. Um, but I, I'd agree with AJ. Um, it's quieted down a little bit, but we've also seen some of our competitors and, and producing partners and producers announce increases solely based on logistics. So they're a little late to the to the to the game, but 
you can see that everybody's feeling the pain on this. It's, you know, any two cents a pound more on a, on a haul of a full truck load uh, is two cents out of the bottom line, you know, maybe it might be your profit in some cases. So, you know, it's not the sort of thing that distribution and producers can continue to absorb on the long term. So passing on that cost is a natural thing. And, um, you know, I, I think that at this point with the tightness of so many products, people are, are tending to accept that increase because they don't have a choice. And it almost seems like like tightness isn't the word to describe it anymore. It almost just seems like the new norm or what it's going to be, at least for a little while. Um, a lot of the issues that are driving the, the quote unquote tightness is not a couple month issues. It's shortage of drivers and shortage of trucks. That's a pretty significant issue. It's, it's a good way to define it. The new norm. Yeah. Yeah. The market just shifted, you know, to a more expensive place than it <laughs> than it was. Yeah. Because then you talk about it like tightness anticipates that, you know, hey, a couple months it'll go back to quote unquote normal. Mm. But it almost seems like this is the new normal we're going to see, at least for the ongoing near future. Yeah. Um, you brought up a good point, too, with the crude oil. Um, first week of May, it's sitting above 67.50. Uh, it's been higher than 65, definitely higher than 60 for most of 2018. Um, how do you see that impacting things? Have, have we started to see some downstream effects from that? Or is it still maybe a little bit early? Yeah, you know, I, I don't get it. No. I really don't. I don't get why it's... I just don't, um, but you know, I just filled up my car this morning, two eighty a gallon. Um, you know, it's up. It's you know, we're right on that cusp of three bucks a gallon. But I remember not too long ago, you know, five fifty, six bucks a gallon. Are we gonna get there again? I don't know, but uh, you know, I, I just I don't feel educated enough to comment on why we're at sixty-seven fifty a barrel right now. WTI, I just don't get it. We're I think are we over seventy on uh, the Brent? If not, it's pretty close. Okay. Well, you know, again, I just I, I I'd have to look into this more. I know that there's been some tweets, you know, from people or the president about <laughs> OPEC and what's going on. I've looked at inventories. Inventories seem very high. Um, on oil worldwide um, but yet again demand is strong worldwide and if if they can get the the price they'll they'll take it yeah I think one other major topic speaking of people tweeting um, is the 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 tariffs the potential tariffs that have kind of been announced in different areas obviously um, steel and aluminum from the European Union Canada and Mexico as well as potential tariffs on China both of them have been delayed or pushed for one reason or another. Um, have you guys started to see any potential feedback from that or, or seen anything interesting as to where impacts might, might come from either of those tariff situations? I haven't heard much about it since it was originally, um, you know, since it was originally put out there. I think it's, you know, it's, it's everybody's kind of, it's in the back of everybody's mind, kind of on the back burner type of thing. And everyone's kind of waiting to see how it's going to play out and transpire. Yeah, I mean, you know, Trump's negotiation strategy is pretty transparent now. You know, he blows up the room and then tries to put the pieces back together in his favor. So, um, you know, the problem is that it's a very sketchy game in the long term because right now the void um, that the United States has created is being filled by Russia and, and China and many parts of the world. And that's a scary situation. Um, you know, we're sort of, um, you know, we're making ourselves um, not a leader any, any longer in the world. Um, we're not such an empire anymore. And uh, so that, the, the, the negotiations of this and, and the way things are going certainly make me nervous. But again, it's, it's very transparent. It's, you know, throw it all on the table and then try and fix it in our favor and uh, we'll see how it shakes out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, moving on, pricing updates and trends. We have some, some price info in front of us courtesy of Petrick and Wire. Um, like Rob said in the beginning, I think a lot of stuff's definitely seemed flat, maybe slightly higher. Crude oil still sitting up above 67, 67.50. Um, also saw the stock market rebound a little bit uh, for the month of April as compared to March. Um, what are you guys seeing maybe on a, on a macro level or maybe with specific products you guys are seeing um, in, in terms of pricing updates and trends for the, the upcoming couple of weeks? It seems like with a lot of chemistries, um, 
pricing has kind of broken away from raw material and you know just because of of uh you know supply demand fundamentals you know things are tight the prices are up even though the the raw materials don't don't justify an increase but um you know that that seems to be the trend with a lot of a lot of chemistries right now i'd agree with aj supply and demand fundamentals are driving you know the the, the pricing is very flat um you know i think uh, propylene was uh, up one um really that's other than that most things are flat there's really nothing exciting here, you know. <laughs> which, can, can, which, which can be a good thing. I can yeah. read the pricing update right before bedtime and put me to sleep. <laughs> but yeah, it's it, it's supply and demand fundamentals driving everything right now, and um, and I certainly concur what AJ said that the uh, the cost basis is separated from these raw materials. I feel like the first podcast we did, we had pricing updates. Oh, this was up five. This was down three. There were some big, significant updates in the last couple of months. It's been a little bit quieter, which I guess can be a good thing. Quiet, quiet can be a good thing every now and then, I suppose. Maybe you know, you know it's quiet because it's not the the real driver of cost today. And uh, if it's available, you're going to pay what the price is. And uh, in many, you know, we're, we're we're certainly you know being generalized here, but um, you know, a lot of chemistry right now is extremely tight. So, and uh, I don't see that that might be the new norm for again. To mm -hmm. your point, Ben. <clears throat> we might be looking at the new norm and supply of chemistry. Yeah, we could be on a, a tipping point. We'll see where it goes. Um, moving on, fe featured products, stuff that's going on maybe seasonally or, or new things we're, we're bringing to market. Um, Rob, anything you want to mention specifically? Well, this is product? certainly a high demand uh, season for plasticizers, agricultural products, our polymer additives, our case product line. Um, you know, a lot of people are going to be painting their house and uh, doing outdoor projects. So a lot of that started ramping up January, February, but it continues right now. Um, late, uh, we've had a very cold, wet spring. Most of the northern half of the United States has. So I think you're going to see some demand pop, especially looking out as we started the, the podcast with 80 degrees here in Rhode Island. I know that I was out this weekend uh, planting and, mm -hmm. and raking and painting and, and fixing up my yard. So uh, I think that, you know, you're going to see Walmart, um, Home Depot, the, the big box stores start to, uh, you know, shed some of their inventory and then more demand. Uh, moving on, event shows and conferences. I think the big one we got coming up that we've mentioned a whole bunch of times is NPE coming up in Orlando. I uh, love we'll a, a good group down there. All three of us will be down there as well as some outside sales and product managers. So I think we're excited for that, to see that coming up. Um, maybe if anyone is not familiar, or maybe this is your first podcast and you're not familiar with the show, um, AJ, you want to give the, the five-second overview on what NPE is? Sure. The NPE is the National Plastics Exposition, I believe it stands for. Um, it's going to be at the Orange County Convention Center in Orlando, Florida. Um, we'll be exhibiting in the South Hall and booth 15013. Um, we'll have a bunch of bunch of cool giveaways and a bunch of product offerings and, and new products to, to discuss. So come by and come by and check us out. And if you see anybody wearing a pair of bright yellow sneakers, it's most likely a member of the TCC team too. So a couple of things to hopefully get some people over to the booth and, and be able to make some new connections. So we're excited for that. After NP, I think the summertime is definitely a little bit quieter on the show front. We had a couple of things coming up. The SPI Vinyl Formulators event uh, down in South Carolina, as well as the Vin Vinyl Formulators Conference in South Carolina. Um, so definitely a little bit quieter for the summertime, which I think will be nice after the AFPM, the coding show. Um, the, the, it's been a pretty busy spring, so I think we're excited to get a little bit um, quieter. Moving on, TCC company news. Um, we got some, some news coming out of our China office, Rob. You want to maybe talk about what's going on over there? Yeah, if you don't know, we've got a brick-and-mortar office in Nanjing, China, and uh, we just changed to a new location, a uh, beautiful office suite, um, not too far from our original uh, office in China. And uh, we're excited to have the new location. Um, there's room for our uh, uh, sourcing and salespeople to visit and work out of the office. Um, so, so that's an exciting uh, new uh, location with more room and a beautiful spot. Yeah, it'll be nice to have that new, that new area. Um, a couple weeks ago, too, we had a local Jamestown Science Club in the office. Uh, we were able to, to have lunch. We did a little tour of the office um, and a, an overview of the, the chemical industry and potential 
careers that these these kids can maybe explore. I think it's it's tough being in a classroom situation. They might not understand fully the careers that you can get into with chemistry or the different STEM, STEM subjects. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. I think we had. We, yeah, it was, a, it was a great time, and I got a lot of great feedback about that from uh, the local um, science teacher here in Jamestown, and I've seen some of the kids around town, oh, hey, how are you? I remember, I, I want to work at the chemical company. <laughs> so uh, some great feedback on that. It's always good to inspire young people and to, to get into the, the, the STEM and, and these type of this industry and, and have a career in this because it is a, it is a wonderful life to have a career in the chemical industry. And uh, it was great to see more girls than boys there yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, I think it's great. Like I know, you know, me working through my chemistry degree at URI, I had no idea that there was a chemical industry, or I had very little knowledge about what it was, or you know, what distribution was in within the industry and stuff. So I think it's great to to you know reach out to these kids and let them know that there's more you know to chemistry than just being in a lab, you know. Yeah, along the same front too, um, TCC just this month uh, sponsored, I believe, for the third year. Uh, the Chemical Educational Foundation's You Be the Chemist Challenge, which if anyone's not familiar, is more or less a, a spelling bee for chemistry, you could say. Uh, there's there's state-level challenges, and then the winner of each state-level challenge moves on to the national challenge in Washington, D.C., uh, where, where kids compete for scholarships and prizes and, and recognition, obviously. So a pretty cool event. Um, TCC is the Rhode Island state sponsor, and then we obviously are, are recognized on the national level as well, but I think... One of the big things TCC likes to do as part of our Love Chemistry campaign is um, be able to, to give back and to sponsor events like this and to continue to hopefully drive, quote unquote, young people to, to be interested in the industry and, and pursue roles in the industry. It is a great thing. And, uh, you know, just looking at all these different things that we're giving back, I can off the top of my head come up with a couple more that maybe we'll talk about in the next podcast. But uh, I think we've said in the past that this is one of the greatest parts of our job that we're able to give so much back to the uh, the, the chemical industry, our local community, uh, and people that are in need. So um, we've had a, quite a few um, people come to us this year that are in need, and, and we're lucky enough to be able to give to them and help support them. Yeah, I think there's definitely a couple more things in the pipeline. I think a couple bike-related events, so warm weather type things. Um, I know both myself and AJ are involved with a couple charity golf tournaments and stuff like that during the summer too, which is nice to be able to do and get out and show support. Um, you know, obviously it's great to, to play around a golf with colleagues, but being able to support the organizations that these charities represent is, is obviously really nice. Um, also get nice to get out on the golf course for yeah. a day and get yeah. paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't hurt. Um, moving on to the month of May, what do you guys see coming up? Anything big in the month of May? Um, kind of throughout the industry, whether it's other events or what you might see for pricing or, or, or products coming up, you know, what's what's coming up this month? I don't know. I think that, uh, you know, I've already heard, uh, you know, a smattering of price increases on, on different products, not necessarily tied to raw materials. Um, you know, back to my point earlier in, in earlier podcasts, load up on inventory. It's, it's time to have product on the floor if you want to make finished goods. Um, yeah, I see May as continued strong flat month. We, we, we saw a real uptick November, December, January, February. March, April, May I think are going to be strong but not like November, December, January, February was where everybody was scrambling and, mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that we're going to see an uptick in demand um, you know, with a late, late winter, um, late spring arrival. Definitely think things are going to pick up. AJ, anything from you? <clears throat> um, you know, for, for May, we're looking at a bunch of travel. I know a lot of people are, are running around doing a lot of different things, including the MPE and other trips. I think we're all trying to get, get that out of our system so we can spend time at home base or near home base in the, in the summer. So that's, um, you know, I agree with all Rob said about pricing trends and, and increased demand due to seasonality. That was all, you know, all good good uh, good thoughts yeah, yeah i think i think it's been a really busy spring travel wise i mean we've been worn out on travel so you know at some point you got to sit in your seat and follow up get quotes out um not that we don't do that and we're you know we're very mobile we have mm -hmm. laptops ipads phones we get it done but um you know at some point you gotta you gotta follow up on all these leads i mean the npe is a monster of a show we'll probably get thousands of leads just from that show alone 
So, you know, you got to put things into action and get people supplied with products and uh, uh, looking forward to the second half of May, you know, staying home put, you know, home base a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so just to wrap things up a little bit, um, so we do have the TCC mobile app that is formally live on the App Store, which we're, we're excited for. Um, it'll have links to this podcast, uh, news and market trends, different pricing information, um, events that both the TCC, TCC team will be uh, exhibiting at or attending, as well as just a, a good list of overall events that are going on in the industry as a, a good database of what's going on. Um, so you can find that by searching the view from Jamestown or the chemical company on both the um, Apple Store as well as the Google Play Store. So that's fully available. Um, we hope that we get a couple downloads and get some good feedback on that. If you have any feedback on what you might like to see in that or how we can make it a better resource for you, feel free to, to let us know. Um, we're, yes. we're, we're real excited about the app and, and the future of what the app is going to be. So it's one of the first really in the industry. It's... Um, you know, it's it's very easily downloaded from uh, from the uh, yeah, Apple Store or the uh, you know what's the other store? Uh, uh, the Google Play Store for okay. Andro- Android devices. And uh, we're going to be continuously adding to this app. It's you know you used to have to have a web page. Now you got to have an app. And and the nice thing about an app is the functionality that's there, um, especially on mobile devices. So uh, we're really excited about it. Yeah, it'll be it'll be fully optimized for iPads and tablets as well, which I think will be popular. I think laptops may be going a little bit less popular and, and tablets with a keyboard are, are getting a little bit more popular. So be accessible via that if you use something like an iPad Pro and a, and a keyboard. Uh, so accessible wherever you're, you're getting your info from in a mobile format. <clears throat> this podcast as well is also available a um, variety of different places. We have it on SoundCloud. Uh, you can stream it on YouTube. Uh, it's on both the iTunes and the Google Play podcast stores. Uh, you can check it out at the view, uh, the chem, the chemco.com slash podcast, or again on the, the mobile app, the view from Jamestown or the chemical company. Um, so pretty much anywhere you can consume music or content, our, our podcast is there. So whatever makes your life easier. Um, we, we've had some good feedback on the podcast so far and hopefully the, the content's beneficial. And again, if there's anything we can talk about or discuss or include to, to make it more beneficial and more resourceful, please let us know. We're, we're happy to adjust guys. Anything else wrapping it up? We're excited. The Jamestown Golf Course is open now. Mm-hmm. The lobsters have arrived. We pulled the lobster pots the other day. Got a bunch of lobsters. The tatag should be coming soon. So the fishing season's upon us. So we're excited about that. See you in Orlando. See you in Orlando. See you in Orlando. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.